how would you describe relations between Mr Johnson and Rishi Sunak? Uh, uh, the respect that one prime minister gives to uh, a predecessor. Um, I think that the, the key thing about um, uh, anyone who takes on that role is that they respect anyone else who has a, that role. Do you think that was a respectful statement from Mr Johnson on the weekend? Yeah, well, Boris, uh, as ever, always expresses himself with a uh, pungency and individuality that's been his hallmark throughout his political career. Well, he but, wanted to sack yeah. Rishi, didn't he? Gitto Harris, you all know well, his former communications chief, told me that Rishi Sunak was about to be demoted from Chancellor before he lost office, before Boris left office. Doesn't speak of a warm relationship, does it? Well, I, I don't know about that. And I mean, I know um, you always I, like I, fighting in a sack, but that's taking it no. to new levels, isn't it? No, um, I, uh, Nick, you know that I'm a, a pussycat and that um, the last thing that I want to do is ever get uh, uh, into a scrap. Boris Johnson says the party was in a better shape under his leadership. Who was the better leader of the Conservative Party, Rishi Sunak or Boris Johnson? Who's the Rishi. better Prime Minister? Rishi. Why? Well, I think uh, we all know that uh, I, I listed some of the things that Boris did which were significant achievements. But uh, Rishi uh, is bringing a professionalism and focus to government today. Not going to be very flattering, though, is it, given that he's thrown his teddy in the corner and talked about a kangaroo court? Well, uh, again, I haven't read it, and, um, you know, Boris but, is clearly... Uh, uh, under what, you know, how could it possibly be flattering? Yeah, well, I think, you know, Boris's reaction Has clearly... Has realistic here. Yeah, quite. Boris's reaction clearly indicates that he feels that uh, it's unfair and he's been traduced. Um, uh, I can't prejudge that. Would good government now be, in fact, to call a general election? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, it's vitally important that we uh, deal with the, the issues that I mentioned earlier. People who uh, are naturally concerned about the cost of living want to see us uh, halving inflation. Uh, we do need to reduce the debt that was built up as a result of uh, the COVID pandemic and indeed the war in Ukraine. We have to grow the economy, hence the Prime Minister making the series of announcements that he is today about technology. We've got to reduce waiting lists because the NHS is the single most important public service and uh, the Health Secretary Steve Barclay has been very successful in bringing extra focus and attention to that. And of course we have to stop the boats, we need to make sure that we deal with the scandal of people smuggling and illegal migration. And again, the Home Secretary has been super energetic in making sure that we can, as has been recorded, reduce the number of people coming here and return more people to Albania. Uh, I think in any assessment of his career to this point, uh, I think that it's only fair that people remember uh, the uh, the successes that uh, he was yes, responsible for and his contribution back, to public life. Michael Gove, no, no, do no, you no, think, exactly. is he a loss? You've, you've said he's well, had enormous number of achievements. Do you consider him a loss to politics if he doesn't stand again as an MP? Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to mention those achievements is that I think that when someone departs office, it's important to... Um, you know, uh, remember the uh, the better side to be, uh, you know, to, th to think with, with grace infusing uh, your response. Previously, you basically suggested that he wasn't fit for office. So. Well, as I say, many of the things that I've said um, and indeed done in the past are there as matters of public record. You're not stand by that now. Well, Boris has made his own decision to stand no, down. but I'm asking you your opinion. Yeah, no, no, and, I, and mine is that um, Boris is someone who has contributed an enormous amount to public life. What should he have done differently? How can we reflect on that? Well, again, uh, I think... Uh, it's it's inevitably uh, difficult for me, having served in Boris's government, having wanted him to succeed and feeling a sense of sadness at his passing. Um, I think it would be premature for me to pass a definitive judgment of that kind. Uh, I, I think it's better for commentators, columnists, historians and others to, to draw their own conclusions. What I can do is reflect on uh, those government successes that occurred while Boris was Prime Minister and thank him for the role that he played in showing leadership, as I mentioned earlier, on the pandemic, on Ukraine and on Brexit. Do you think he misled Parliament? Well, I don't know. So, I mean, on, 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 the, on your previous question, I do think, you know, uh, uh, there is a loss uh, when someone like Boris departs the stage. I, I do think that and I, I think that was implicit in what I said earlier. On the question of whether or not he misled Parliament, then uh, a parliamentary committee has been set up to investigate that. All, all of us as MPs voted for that committee to do its job. And after that report is published, we will once again be talking about Boris Johnson, won't we? Um, how much longer is the Conservative Party going to have to talk about someone who isn't Prime Minister or now even an MP anymore? Well, I think, again, there are two things I'd say. The first thing is that um, in reviewing the situation, I think as 
you know, Boris's parliamentary career has ended and uh, uh, he stepped down, it's appropriate to look back on his contribution as Prime Minister and to be grateful for his public service. Uh, I think that uh, all of us will want to be um, uh, grateful for what he did during the COVID uh, pandemic when he initiated the vaccine task force, appointed Kate Bingham and was responsible for the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe. We should be grateful for that, grateful also for the staunch support uh, that he gave to Ukraine. He was uh, the first and I think the strongest supporter in Western Europe of Volodymyr Zelensky. But it's also the case that the government will be concentrating on its work. We haven't, I haven't, heard all the evidence, so we need to see that report. I can make a judgment on the things that mm -hmm. Boris has done in the past, which I think are good, but what I can't do is preempt that report. No, of course not, but the evidence must be pretty damning, know, otherwise he wouldn't have resigned, would he? We know what happened at number 10. Yeah. Uh, we know what <laughs> happened under lockdown, and we know what Boris Johnson said in the House of Commons. Well, I'm, I'm very old-fashioned in lots of ways, and one of them is that I'd like to read that report. I imagine the government is seeking stability, craving, like, a, I don't know, a, a smooth passage, if you like, towards the next general election. You've now got three by-elections to fight. Boris Johnson isn't helping you, is he? Well, there are by-elections. By-elections during the course of any government's time are always challenging, but uh, we have good candidates, uh, in, uh, I know, that will be in place, a very good candidate who's been selected in Selby, uh, and I'm looking forward to supporting them. Elections are part of political life. Uh, it's also the case, I think, that you do best in elections when you concentrate on good government. And uh, we are united behind Rishi Sunak in making sure that we demonstrate that the priorities that the British public have are those which govern uh, uh, every waking moment that we have. I thought last year, after three prime ministers in a cruelly rapid succession, Mr Sunak was going to bring in a period of calm. This is not calm. You've got three by-elections on the way, people standing down and the party at war. What's gone wrong? Well, you do have within government calm, focused, uh, delivery-oriented hard work going on every day. So uh, later today, I'll be having a meeting with uh, other ministers, civil servants and outside experts to look at how we can focus research and development money, the, you know, the vital yeast that leads to growth, how we can make sure that money uh, and that investment is spread more evenly across the United Kingdom, not just Oxford, Cambridge and London, but also Newcastle and Manchester. Of course, uh, it will be the case that people will uh, later this week be looking at the Privileges Committee report, making their own judgment on that report. But uh, I think that if you were to join me in any of the meetings uh, that I have today and throughout the week, you would observe uh, a professionalism and focus on the part of government ministers and officials who are seeking to deliver on the priorities that I've outlined. I think, uh, as, as you said earlier, uh, it's important in assessing his contribution to take an appropriately balanced view. Michael Gove, thank you very much indeed. No, thank you. You're welcome.